Welcome, welcome, welcome to Moments, Awakenings Moments to Inspire. I am Angela, and I am so honored to be with you here at this point and moment in time. It is a fabulous day for co-creating, and I can't wait to dive in and see what we co-create together. So um, my name is Angel, and welcome again. If you have any, uh, if you'd like to join in the chat, we are broadcasting at Oneness Talk Radio.com, Oneness Talk Radio uh, at YouTube, and Oneness Talk Radio and Facebook. And if you would like to, uh, and if you're able to, and you're in uh, any of those chats and you want to pop in and just uh, chat amongst yourselves, put something in the chat for me to read, to express out to all of us, or even just to say hi um, and co create together with me. So um, by all means, Please, 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 please put it in the chat. I'm going to just quickly put my emails in there. So if you ever want to get in contact with me, uh, by all means, please do so. Uh, and... There we go. My apologies for taking up some time there. So, um, let's see here. Okay. Uh, just wanted to get organized and there we go. Co-creating together. Thank you so, so much for your patience. Um, so on with the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is a beautiful, beautiful day. We're on the cusp of July. We just had a new moon there on Tuesday. It was absolutely glorious. I hope you were all able to soak in that energy and, and dance in the starlight because beautiful, beautiful evening. Um, and today is going to be an absolutely perfect co-creation show. I can feel it. I can feel it now. So welcome. Um, before we begin, usually what I like to do is something that um, is very near and dear to my heart. It's called the Ave Saw Breath. And what it does is it allows us to come together uh, in unison um, and the uh, open receptivity of co-create and the energy that the universe has to offer to us. So I just love to do that. It's a just a practice that I like to do to open the show. It's very easy and very simple. Anyone can do it. It's uh, when you think Ave on your inhale and you do so through your nose, it is a hail. Ave means hail. Hello. Greetings to the divine, divine masculine, divine feminine, the divine spark that is in all of us. And then the saw, which is the exhale out loud. That is like a release um, and a surrender to the moment uh, and to the energies at hand and to the movement that you are going to uh, have forward, right, in your life. So we do three Ave Saw breaths just to ground and connect with one another. So let's do that together. So it's Ave in through your nose, out through your mouth, okay? We'll do it three times. Hand on heart so that you make that connection with your body so that you know it's safe, it knows that it's safe, um, and it understands. So here we go. Ave. Sa. Ave. Sa. One more. Ave. And always remember to smile. Smile is half of it, or maybe all of it, three quarters of it, if you think about it. Because just smiling just lights your face up. It lights your whole body up. It gets those chemicals flowing for joy and happiness and peace. Smiling at the end just is like the little cherry on top. That's what I like to think about it. So namaste, B. It is so wonderful to see you here. Thank you so much for joining us. It is an honor for, to have you here with us again. So 
Uh, again, anybody who wishes to chat, please do so. Put it in the chat. I would love to, to co-create with you. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, that's what this show is all about. It's all about inspiration and inspiring each other to go out and to be of service to others and to be of service for um, the, your communities, right? So that's, and the inspiration that you take here from this show, we can take out into the day for whatever it is that you wish to co-create today, whether it's at work or at school or just out and about in your community being of service to others. So that's what this, this, uh, this show is all about, is inspiring, right? And today we're going to do some great um, stories that I have lined up, some beautiful uh, sharings as well. I'm hoping to do a meditation at the end. Everyone sees those. Uh, so we'll end again with our brief meditation just to say, leave with the energies uh, uh, together. And then, but for, to begin with, I always like to start with the ascended numerology for the day. And if those of you who don't know what ascended numerology you to go to Sri and Kira.com they um Kira brought ascended numerology brought ascended numerology uh, to the world several years ago and it was an honor to be able to learn from this beautiful master um so I was able to tune into the um the ascended numerology for today which is a five which is very very interesting so it's the five pointed star it's the the revealing of of truth and the action um taken from that that truth revealed right so I thought it was very perfect considering the topic that I I wanted to to discuss today, which is about uh, truth and reconciliation and co-creation with Indigenous people. So it worked perfectly. I, I just I didn't even imagine when I I chose this topic and and I wanted to talk to some something about that was near and dear to my heart. And I looked at today's ascended numerology. I was like, of course, of course, it's a five. <laughs> it would have to be a five, right? So I was feeling into what today means. Um, coming from the five, from the that the unity and the the movement of action and and truth revealed, basically is what five is about. Um, and again, it was perfect for for today's topic. Um, and so when I was feeling into it, this is what came up for me this morning. <clears throat> five is uh, all that is illuminated that was hidden is now illuminated. Sorry, all that was hidden is now illuminated. Uh, you may not want to look at it. You may not want to acknowledge it, but it is there. Turn and face it. See it for what it is, a gift, an opportunity to expand and to ascend your vibration. Look inward at the truth and the deceptions that you may hold. Open yourself up to seeing them, acknowledging them, feeling them, releasing them with love and without judgment. The deceptions that are weighing you down, release them. With these deceptions released, the five points of the star will act as your anchor points in peace, love, truth, or peace, love, joy, truth, and reconciliation. Step into the inspired action of the truth that is before you. So that is what came to me this morning when I felt into the ascended number, uh, the ascended numerology for today, which is again a five. And if you want to learn more about ascended numerology, which is basically the the um, path uh, that your soul is taking in this carnation, incarnation. And if you want to learn more, again, go please go to sriankira.com. My beloved Blue Jay is in the front yard singing away. He always he always shows up when I'm doing my broadcasts. I, I think it's amazing. Thank you, Mr. Blue Jay, for that blessing. I don't know if you were able to hear him or not, but uh, he was definitely, definitely there. Um, but now he's got me off track, and now I have to figure out where I was again. <laughs> so if you want and uh, again, also, if you're wishing to have Oh, hello, my beloved puppy would like to say hello. We are having a day of everyone piping in and saying hello today. So we're just going to let her out the door. And um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll let her out. My apologies, everyone. My apologies. Um, so if, if you're, I also um, have been 
gifted with by Lady Kira And if you are uh, would like to honor me with uh, doing a scroll on your behalf, I would love to do so. So please contact me. Um, you can go to my website. It's Waters of self-ascension.com or again you can reach me at any of those emails above that i put there in the chat so there um so today's topic um that i wanted to talk to you about was finding inspiration among uh healing and collaboration with the indigenous peoples of mother gaia and I was going to speak to it um because I'm unfortunately don't have a guest um but I am going to speak to it a little bit on from my perspective, and um, and then I was going to share a, a lovely story that I learned as a child, the very first Indigenous story that I ever, ever learned, and it's about um, the creation of Turtle Island. So I'll share that a little bit later. Um, but first, I have to um, share and shine bright lights on people who've inspired me and two people that have inspired me. One has been my inspiration almost my entire life. And the other one I have not yet personally met, but she has been inspiring me for well over a year. And um, the first is my mentor, and her name is Valerie Weetung. Um, she is a beautiful, beautiful Indigenous soul who has helped um, me through life so many ups and downs and uh, has, has always been one of my greatest inspirations. So I just wanted to say shout out to her and also a shout out to um, Mallory over at tribaltradeco.com and uh, Tribal Trade Co. Uh, YouTube. She has some beautiful, beautiful videos out there. And if you ever get a chance to touch base with her and her teachings, please do so because it is a real, real treat. And again, it's uh, tribaltradeco.com. And uh, so she is, um, Mallory herself is part of the inspiration for today's show. Um, I was touching base because we're coming up on Canada Day here in Canada. And um, we're also in, in the path of what we call truth and reconciliation. And for those of you who do not know what truth and reconciliation is, um, we, it is, a government mandate that we have uh, just been given to learn what has happened uh, with the history of our Indigenous communities uh, by the government of Canada. And it has come to light. Um, where shall we begin? Let's begin at the beginning. Um, <clears throat> just to give a brief overview. And again, if you want to touch base a little bit more in depth, again, I encourage you, please, please go to Mallory's videos. But for well over the last century, we, uh, the Canadian government had, through several different time periods, taken children from the residential, or sorry, from the native reserves, the Indigenous reserves, and to basically took control over the the, the reserves the the um and they t this was in the indian act in the 1800s and because of that they decided that they were going to assimilate the native population in and among the white settlers of the area and <clears throat> So basically what they did was they set up various schools throughout Canada, mostly church run, mostly by the Catholic Church. And they basically removed children between school age children between the ages of four and 17 from their homes and from their families. And they were forced to go to these schools where they were not allowed to speak their language, they were not allowed to wear their clothes, they were not allowed to celebrate their culture, and they were forced assimilated into white white culture. And um, throughout the course of that, many of these children never returned home. And since that, uh, in since 2021, we have here in Canada, several Indigenous communities who've had residential schools there have found several unmarked graves of children who are no longer with us, nor did we know that they, where they were or how they had passed. So the Truth and Reconciliation is about understanding and 
embracing what we have done as a nation to the indigenous in our country. And the government is stepping up um, as best they can. And we we live, we have this mandate now where the Truth and, Truth and Reconciliation Committee has put out uh, that it um, all Canadians will now learn about truth and reconciliation and what it truly means. Um, and so that's that's a very brief history. Um, these The last residential school was closed in the 1990s here in Canada. So it is, it's a very long widespread um, wound, I guess is the easiest word to say there. And, um, but the indigenous community is um, stepping forward and, there are allies that are wanting to join hand in hand with them to uncover the truth and to help heal and move forward as a country and as a nation. And we now fly our flags at half mast and will continue to do so as community speaks forward and says it, that it's time to do so. So these are the small, small gestures that are happening that are visible. And um, I believe hopefully the school systems will be having these lessons taught throughout Canada. It, some of it has been taught in pockets throughout Canada, but now it will be mandated Canada-wide. That's my understanding anyway. And um, I, so that is the, brie, the wound that we're trying to heal here in Canada. And, um, and I just want to This is, I want to personally say I'm sorry, I guess. I have Indigenous ancestry, or I grew up with the understanding that I had Indigenous ancestry. So, so whether I do or whether I, for me, it is deep and it is personal. So I feel you and um, I'll never understand you because I was never raised in that uh, that culture or community. But it is my sincerest hope that um, moving forward, um, that I will be embracing and adopting as much of my heritage as possible in all aspects of it. And I encourage everybody to do that, whether you're, you know, Caucasian, white, black, whether you're of mixed origins, go out there, embrace your heritage, dance in it for all the joy that it has, right? And if it has a dark side, don't turn away from that. Acknowledge it, understand it, learn from it without the judgment. Take the judgment away, right? The judgment's always part of the problem, right? So if we take the judgment away and we say, I'm open to experiencing and understanding my culture and others' cultures, what a world we can build, eh? <laughs> that would be fabulous. Um, so I wanted to speak on behalf of who I am as um, a person who grew up as a Caucasian person, but a person who wished to embrace her native heritage as much as possible. And truth and reconciliation is as much an internal conflict within me and as an individual as it is within the country. And it's releasing judgment, right? It's releasing judgment. And and opening your arms and saying, I am willing to learn and I am willing to listen. And if you don't want to, to talk to me, I also understand it is not your responsibility to teach me. Um, and I will respect that and to be open and say that is okay. These are all things that we can do to embrace our Indigenous communities that are around us. Um, and I think to embrace each other. It's just common sense. It's not even just for, for Indigenous peoples too, to try and get to know them. It's to try and get to know anybody. Just be open and honest with who you are and where you're coming from and talk to people and smile at people. And if you come into a greeting or um, an event with that energy, think of how 
how you can shift the energy of that other person and make their day that much brighter and that much better. And the indigenous have such beautiful, beautiful ways and beliefs that are humbling and they have a connection with the earth. They don't understand. It's more of a now moment, live in the now moment um, rather than the past and um, move into the future, but live in the now moment. That's what, um, for me, the Indigenous, that's just right there is the best lesson that you can ever learn from, from them is live in the now moment, find the joys of the now, whether it's cleaning catty, kitty litter, typing up a letter or cooking a meal for your family, find the joy in doing those things, right? And then find the joy in ceremony, coming together as a group, as, as whether it be again in a sweat lodge or at your dinner table, come together as a group, open, understanding and being yourself and not hiding behind things that you are worried about that what will other people say and think what will other um the stereotypes that you might have in your own mind might also be a a, a very large block to getting to know indigenous communities or to become allies for with indigenous communities is that you might be afraid that you are stepping on toes or that you are um that you don't want to interfere or to cause harm any further and i think maybe because that i i completely understand that because that is a frame of mind that i had once had even though i had indigenous heritage i felt that i didn't want to harm any further and so i didn't want to try and press forward with learning more and more about my heritage. Um, and then I just, I decided that we're all people and we're all human and we're all together here now. And we need to coexist together. We need to communicate each, with each other and find out and one another for what we can each bring to the table. Right? So, coming forward and stepping forward and saying no i'm going to learn about my indigenous community or no i'm going to become an indigenous ally that in and of itself is an amazing step and to know who you are and why you're doing it um is and being able to convey that to the indigenous community that is amazing as well and those steps that you need to take in order to embrace yourself and embrace the indigenous communities around you. And maybe eventually you'll take part in ceremonies, you'll take part in sweat lodges, you'll be able to go to go powwow. If they if your indigenous community ever, ever offers um, an open powwow uh, to the public, please, 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 I highly encourage you because they are such amazing events the energy songs the drums the dancing the jingle dresses the heritage it just exudes from everybody and it is an absolute joy and honor to watch it really truly is and i just encourage anybody to please please go go to a powwow if you ever get a chance and really immerse yourself in that because it is a wonderful event um what else can we do i should uh i wrote them all down <laughs> i did write them all down um yes be open be honest share the experiences with your indigenous allies and share your ex your experiences um from other experiences with allies so talk about um who you are and and um why you're there and and how you want to be of service and, and and can you be of service can you be of aid is there you know what would you like us to do always uh i think a good rule of thumb would probably be always connect with the indigenous first before you make a move ask them what they want what they need they're people just like you and us they're they're able to express themselves 
reconnect with yourself deep in your heart and you will know the answers and you will know the questions and you will be able to reconnect with uh, yourself and them on such a deep, deep level. And I definitely, definitely encourage that. Um, The more, yeah, the more connections, the more in, did, in experience that you can bring, the better. That's what I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope um, the other thing to, to talk about today, too, was just to, to tell how the first the first outreach that I ever had with my Indigenous community, I was very fortunate that I grew up in an area where I had um, indigenous reserves very close by. And in fact, um, were somewhat integrated within the community themselves. And so, and my mentor herself is, is indigenous. So I grew up immersed with it somewhat. And uh, so I was very, very fortunate that way. And, but some people aren't, but I also was very fortunate. I think, I believe it was in kindergarten and it was the very first story I'd ever learned. And we were able to bring in, someone came in from the reserve. I don't know their name. They were a beautiful, beautiful soul. And they told us a beautiful story about North America and Turtle Island and how, um, and that's what the indigenous, he um, the Ojibwa and the Anishinaabek um, call Turtle Island. And, um, they told this story back, oh my goodness, now we're going back 45 years ago. And I still remembered it and it still struck home. And when I reconnected with the story, I, I just pulled up several on YouTube and there were some beautiful stories and renditions about it there. And just reconnecting with it brought out all of these memories about just sitting there in awe and listening to the storyteller, listening to the indigenous, uh, it was a gentleman, tell the story of, um, it was Nana Bush. He said Nana Bush at the time, say Nana Bozo, I believe, or Bush, Nana Busho. And um, he just exuded this wisdom and radiance and power. And I remember just sitting there in awe as like a little five-year-old, just wide-eyed and listening to the story. So I wanted to share that with you too, just to hope, hopefully ignite that, that spirit within you. And um, it's the story of how Turtle Island came to be. And it's it's a second creation story, and it's very similar to that that's depicted in um, the Bible as well. So basically, the great creator God um, had sent a flood because there, the he was not happy with the wicked ways of the people that were here before. And so he decided that he was going to send water to cleanse the earth, and he sent this great, great flood. To cleanse the earth. And one of the only creatures to survive was a man that, that was named Nanabusho or Nanabush. And Nanabush is said to be the son of a mortal woman and of the spirit of the West. So he is a demigod, more or less. And Nanabush uh, was one of the few to survive, along with several other water creatures and birds. And Nanabush was able to find a log, and he swam to it. He swam, and he pulled himself up onto the log, tired, <sighs> and looking around. The skies had cleared. There was no rain. He could see miles and miles, but there was only water, water, water everywhere. And one by one, the creatures that had survived the flood had swum up to Nanabush or flown down to Nanabush onto the log. And they greeted him and said hello. And there was the walrus and the seal and the loon and the muskrat and the beaver. <clears throat> and they all greeted Nanabush. And they saw that Nanabush was very tired and that he would need shelter and a place to land soon or he could die. And so they were growing very, very concerned about Nanabush. And he, 
he said, we could possibly do something, something maybe if I could get a piece of land, a piece of dirt, a piece of soil, maybe, maybe I can do, I can do something with that. Maybe I can create something with that. But where are we going to get soil? It's nothing but water everywhere. And so the walrus thought, I know, we'll go to the bottom. I'll swim to the bottom. I'm the biggest. I'm the strongest. I'm the most powerful one here. I can swim to the bottom. I will get the soil for Nana Bush and I will bring it back up. And so the walrus took one ginormous <gasps> and took a deep breath and he dove down under the water and he swam and he swam and he swam and he swam. 10 minutes passed, 15 minutes passed, 20 minutes passed and still no walrus. And then a few moments later, there was this sputtering and this splashing, this huge splash just off to the side and everyone turned to see walrus breaking the surface, oh, coughing and sputtering and flapping his fins, his flippers and taking deep breaths. And, oh, I couldn't reach the bottom. I couldn't even see the bottom. The bottom is nowhere to be seen. Oh, what are we going to do? Nana Bush? I don't know. I'm the biggest and strongest. Nobody else is going to be able to make the bottom. And the seal, the seal stepped in. And he said, but walrus, I'm faster than you. Maybe I can make the bottom. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. So the great seal, he, he decided that he was going to try. And then they, they swam off to the side and they took one great big deep breath. <gasps> down they went and he swum and 10 minutes went by 15 20 25 and then a few moments later again this big sputtering roar came to the surface and they looked off to the side and there was seal <coughs> coughing and choking and unable to 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 breathe he's gasping for air <sighs> I went down as far as I could. I couldn't see the bottom. I couldn't even reach it. I don't think we're ever going to reach soil. What are we going to do? And one by one, each of the creatures, the loon, the beaver, they all took their turns trying to get down to the bottom. None of them could reach the bottom to bring up soil for Nana Bush to use to create with. The turtle tried. They couldn't even reach the bottom. And then finally, the last little creature left was just a small little muskrat, a tiny, tiny little muskrat. And she was raised her little paw and said, I will try. I will try for Nana Bush. I will go to the, and I will bring up soil for Nana Bush. I will help Nana Bush and, and take care of Nana Bush so he can create. And all of the other bigger creatures just looked at this tiny little muskrat and they laughed and they laughed and no way little muskrat you're never going to reach the bottom if i couldn't reach the bottom if we couldn't reach the bottom there's no way you can reach the bottom and she said no no i'm going to try and i'm going to reach the bottom for nana bush so the little muskrat paddled out and she took her last deep, 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 deep breath. <gasps> and down she went. Well, 10 minutes went by, 15 minutes went by, 20 minutes went by, 25, 30. 35, 40 minutes went by and Muskrat still hadn't returned. Oh no, oh, where's Muskrat? They all thought. And then off to the side, they heard this little bloop noise and this little <sighs> and there was Muskrat floating on the surface. And all the creatures rushed over to him and they pulled him over to the log to Nana Bush. And Nana Bush bent down and scooped up the little muskrat in his hands. And he looked down at the muskrat and she took her last breath. And when she did so, 
she opened her little palm, and in her little hand, she held some soil. The little muskrat, tiniest of all, made it to the bottom and brought up soil so that Nana Bush could make something and create something with that. Nana Bush took the soil from the little muskrat's paw and sat her gently down on the log. And then he, he, he looked around and thought, what can I do with this? And the turtle stepped forward and he said, I, I will, I will carry the soil for you, Nana Bush, in honor of the muskrat. I will take that burden on in honor of her. And so Nana Bush took the soil that Muskrat had so carefully brought to the surface in her tiny, tiny little paw, and he placed it on the carapace of the turtle, on the back of the turtle. And then all of a sudden, the land began to grow and expand and grow and expand even more, even further and greater and wider. Grass began to grow on the back of the turtle. Trees began to sprout, rivers and lakes all began to flow and wave in the wind. This island, this turtle island that Nana Bush created in honor of Muskrat is what we call North America. And this is the story of how Turtle Island came to be because of the spirit of a tiny, tiny, tiny little muskrat. And this is the story of Turtle Island. And that's which I wanted to share with you today. And I hope, I hope you enjoyed it all so, so much, as much as I did in sharing it. There's so many great stories out there that are waiting to be told, but so many uh, great stories of deep, deep wisdom that are being returned to their proper rightful place and origin in the pantheon of beautiful stories of creation and myth. And it it is an honor to be able to bring this one to you. Again, there are so, so many. The Ojibwa have another one um, that is with regards to the beloved Pleiades. And it is another great story with regards to children and wanting to expand their knowledge and expand their belief and their and their and their elders are trying to hold them back. And they learn this this sacred dance, this sacred um, Sarah adults are meant to perform and because they perform it the God the creator God enjoyed it so much he took them to to heaven and they become the, the these children become the Pleiades the seven sisters as we like to call them so that's another another beautiful story um, by the Ojibwa indigenous here in Canada um, the seven grandfathers is that they bestowed the um, the seven teachings of and I can't possibly do them justice so please please I again I highly highly <laughs> ask you to to go to tribal trade co um, YouTube channel and and watch their their videos because Mallory does such beautiful telling of the the seven grandfathers wisdoms and teachings so please go there and check them out because they're fabulous fabulous um Welcome to all of you that are here, uh, lovely Patricia and Batia. Uh, it's so great to see you here and to everyone else who's out there listening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I hope you're enjoying the day and everything is wonderful for you. Oh, I also wanted to speak briefly, very briefly. I meant to do this at the beginning, but we're putting it in now. Everything is all in all perfect divine order, right? Um, I just wanted to talk to you about something called uh, that we are doing among the Yoga of Self Ascension community and Minga. Sorry, the, the Yoga of Self Ascension Minga. Um, they are coming together for seven days of hope. And what we what it is is I just wrote it down very quickly. It's seven ministry minutes uh, holding seven minutes of mastery presence, 
holding that peace, love, joy, and neutrality, and opening yourself up to the gifts of the universe. And to do that for seven minutes with the idea of having um, yourself and your universal community in one big hug and receptivity from the universe. And just to hold that mastery presence for seven minutes. Um, just think if we all do that for seven minutes, the shift that we can create, right? It's all, it's all if we all all come together, coming together, better together, right? So that's the, the seven days of hope. And um, I believe if you want to learn a little bit more about that, you can go again to shriankira.com. I'm pretty sure they have something uh, up there about that. Um, and uh, some of the other hosts on Oneness Talk Radio have also been speaking about it too. So I'm sure you can tune into any one of their shows and they'll talk about it as well. And I'm sure another thing they'll talk about, too, is the great butterfly energy that is being experienced right now this week. It's it, our cocoons. We're coming out of our cocoons, everyone. Stretch your wings. Let them sit out in the sun. Let them dry off. But don't wait too long. Just lift off. Lift off in the air. Take flight. Once those wings dry out, don't don't sit there and dawdle. Just, just do it. Just take flight. You can do it. <laughs> Embrace the butterfly in you. The, that's what I think we should take away today. Embrace the butterfly in you, for sure. <laughs> so how much time? Oh, perfect timing. Oh, thank goodness. I didn't want to go over too much because I really did enjoy doing the, the meditations with you guys at the end of each show. I really, really am enjoying them. And I do hope that you're enjoying them as well. So if you want to take a drink, get yourself settled, get yourself uh, wherever you are. If you're driving or need to be aware, please just come back to this video another time and sit with the meditation afterwards. And uh, I hope I hope that you truly enjoyed today's show and all that um, was brought to you. And again, I encourage you to go out and, and just go talk to the Indigenous in your communities. Embrace them. See what they have to say understand and and open yourself up communicate with them we're all people we're all human don't be afraid don't don't be afraid all right. get yourself comfortable and i'm going to do uh again just three deep ave saw breaths to kind of get us centered and and ready to move forward with the meditation. So hand to heart one more time. And we're going to do three deep Ave Sa breaths. And here we go. Ave Sa. Ave Sa. Ave Sa. Hmm. Oh, the crickets are starting to chirp. The frogs are starting to croak. You can hear them now from your window. The sun is beginning to set. The sky is that beautiful purple turquoise pink that eats just like cotton candy. You just want to reach out and touch it. <laughs> The lake, oh, you can feel it. It is singing to you now as you open your door and you step off your porch and you step onto the trail, the trail leading. You don't even need to have your eyes open. You know the way. You can feel the way. You can feel the life popping up all around you along the path, the honeysuckles, the poison ivy, the ferns, the maple trees, that lone willow over there. No, you know the way. There, there to the, below the majestic pines is your beautiful, beautiful lake. You rush down to the water's edge and you kick your shoes off and you roll your pant legs up. Crickets are chirping, 
and the frogs are just croaking. The loon is calling out in the distance and her echo is just reverberating off the trees. All the stars are beginning to come out, winking on like little wee fireflies in a tapestry of purple and dark blue. With a giggle, you step out onto the dock and you plunk yourself down on the edge and plunge your feet into the cool, cool, crisp water. You look down and there are minnows darting in and among your toes, trying to nibble on them. And you see the big, glorious sunfish, blue, green, iridescent yellow, just doing a lazy figure eight between your legs. And then you hear a boom, boom and a swooshing sound on the surface. And you smile, knowing exactly, exactly what it is. And you look over, there it is, coming out of the mud, coming out of the muck, your lily pad your throne, the magic carpet that has taken you on so many glorious rides before and that is waiting to take you on yet another one. You smile and stand as it grows larger and larger and stronger and stronger until it's large enough to hold your weight and you step down onto the lily pad and you take your rightful place on top of its throne on top of the lotus of North America. You are at peace, love, and joy in this moment. And you sigh. Just feeling into it. You close your eyes, you sit cross-legged, and you go deep, deep within. You feel that warmth beginning to radiate it from the center of your being. It takes over the core of you. It goes up into your chest and out into your limbs. You can feel the warmth under your legs and under your bottom as the lotus lifts, begins to lift you high into the air, up, up, up into the starry, starry night. Van Gogh has nothing on tonight. The stars are beautiful. They're out in all their glory, every hanging jewel. The new moon was only two days ago. And soon, Mother Moon will be winking her eye out at us all once again. But for now, now we just enjoy the jewels, the jewels hanging in the dark velvet sky. So we climb higher and higher up into the clear sky high enough that we can look down and we can see all of Turtle Island in all of its glory right from the top of its head up in the Can Canadian Arctic down across its carapace through the prairies and through the United States, through the deserts and through the mountains, down, down, down to her tail, his tail, into the Yucatan, into Mexico, where it joins with South America. This grand, grand, large, beautiful turtle carrying the weight of this ginormous North America in honor of a wee, wee creature. Look at her beauty and her majesty. Look at all that was created upon her back by Nana Bush. All of the trees and the animals were named by Nana Bush, the co-creator 
all of the moose, the deer, the boar. Look at them all. They're glorious. Look at the fish of the sea, of the of the rivers, of the lakes. See them shiver, shimmer below the water. See them swim in their schools, jumping through the surface and splashing around with joy. Oh, glorious, glorious fish. The salmon who swim upstream. Yes. They fight that current just to bring new life into this world. The strength, the strength they must have. Feel into that. Feel into the strength of North America and all that she has to offer. Feel the gifts. See the gifts. Embrace the gifts. Embrace the people that are there, those that see you and those that don't. Remember, all have the right to be. Give them love. Give them light. Give them all love. Give them all light. All creatures on Turtle Island, give. Embrace them. Love them. Do you see the point with which you started? Do you see the shining lake? Not yet. I think, I think we need to descend a little more to see the shining lake, to see our home and how she connects to Turtle Island, whether it's on Turtle Island or whether it's elsewhere on Mother Gaia. Connect with your lake now descend and see it for all that it is. It is the lifeblood of Mother Gaia. Again, whether it's on Turtle Island or anywhere else in the world, this, this gift of the shining lake, you smile and are thankful as you descend with great gratitude, peace, love and joy again you reach out across the world as you descend and you send your love throughout the world to every corner to every light to every being peace love and joy fills you and you again receive it and from there spread it out into the world you're descending slower to your shining jewel winking up at you. You see it. You hear now, just very faintly off in the distance, <laughs> those crickets and those indelible frogs. Yes, you can hear them. And there's the loon. Yes, yes, yes descending even more. Your lily pad flits onto the surface of the water. It comes to a sliding rest right up to the dock's edge. You smile and say thank you. Thank you once again for this glorious sight that you have gifts that you have given me. Thank you for the lovely, lovely journey that you have taken me on. I will embrace the teachings and the sights that were before me today, and I will take them out into the world with me, and I will spread that energy, that peace, that love, that joy, and I will be of service to others in unconditional love in all that I do. This is who I am, and this is who I wish to be. So.
the lily pad does a deep bow and descends below the surface. Back, back below the surface to the mud with which it grew, where it waits for you once again. Until the next time you look around, it is really dark now and the sky is just lit up with the Milky Way. You give one last Ave Sa breath. You bask in the stillness, the honor and the beauty of it all. You give thanks and you turn again, not needing to see you can feel home. Back up the trail towards home. You wave to the willow. You wave to the poison ivy. And you wave to the honeysuckle, for they all have their place. And you thank Mother Gaia for all that she has given you. And when you're home, home, behind you with deep satisfaction, and you open your eyes once again. So, I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did, and that you were able to connect with it as deeply, as deeply as I did. So I hope you're able to return to this video as often as you feel called to, and that you're able to connect with the place that I like to call home, Turtle Island. <laughs> and I am complete. Namaste. Until next week, everyone.